Hey, hi there, um, QGIS community. Welcome to this month's Open Day. Um, and our first session is going to be presented by Ben. Um, and he will be giving us an amazing talk on what he has dubbed Quasketball, which is using QGIS to um, do analysis and to visualize um, different elements of basketball. So over to you, Ben. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, Amy. Um, and hi, hi, Tim. Uh, uh, pleasant day to everyone. Good, good evening from here in the Philippines. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone else. Um, first of all, thank you to uh, Amy and Tim and the entire you know, QGIS Open Day team for for um, for for letting me share, you know, what I call basketball uh, today. So. Alrighty, great stuff. So, this um, this one uh, for for this for for this afternoon for 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 this session, I'll be talking about uh, spatial analysis and visualization of, of basketball with QGIS. Uh, as I said, my name is Ben. I'm from I'm from the Philippines. I'm a geospatial generalist, a big open stuff advocate, and a a big sports nerd. Uh, if, if you haven't noticed yet. I'm currently the data training lead for the Open Knowledge Foundation. I also serve as CTO for a tech nonprofit in the Philippines, Smart City. And lastly, I'm the proprietor for uh, BNHR. It's a consulting service where I provide um, training, support, and consulting services on open source, open data, and especially open geospatial stuff. Um, I think the important stuff about about that in myself is uh, it's fairly young BNHR is fairly young I established it in 2019 I consider it part enterprise and part advocacy um, because uh, part aside from the business side of it I want you know BNHR to help foster build and support the open source open data and especially the fossil energy community in the Philippines uh, it's a QGIS certifying organization and a QGIS sustaining member uh, since 2019. Um, with that out of the way, why basketball and spatial? So it's it's something that I get asked pretty much every time I I talk about what I what I do and why I do it. People always uh, ask me so. Why do you use you know, spatial analysis on basketball and things like that? Um, what I tend to say is, and it's always been it's always been the same. It's because basketball is spatial. I could even extend it to all kinds of sports. Really, any event, any anything that happens inside of a basketball court, or any sporting event that occurs inside a field, inside of a pitch, inside of a track has a spatial component or sometimes even spatial temporal component. So everything happens everywhere, right? Um, that's why it makes sense to eyes and to just try to understand basketball from, from a spatial perspective. Um, that brings me to, to, to a brief history, if you will indulge me, of why I came to, to this point. Way back in 2012, I saw this study by Dr. Kurt Goldsberry on entitled Court Vision, where he presented visual and spatial analytics for the NBA. He he wanted to answer the age-old question of who the best shooter in the NBA was. And uh, at that time, the um, the the argument was the current statistics being used, like field goal percentage, effective field goal percentage, uh, points per attempt weren't really incorporating the spatial aspect of, of shooting. That means that these statistics don't actually show you where, you know, where shots are, were being made or where, where field goals were, were being taken, which this resonated a lot with me at that time. And it opened up a lot of, of ideas in my head uh, in a way that my undergraduate research project uh, way back during my college days was actually uh, inspired by that study. Um, Court Vision PH or Court Vision Philippines was a system to extract field goal locations and 
perform spatial analysis of shooting using broadcast basketball videos. So we had a neat little application that could extract field goal data from, from broadcast videos. And then we created uh, 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 our own little app on, in Python that could create maps from, from that data and then compute like basic statistics and spatial statistics from the data sets that we were able to extract. So that extraction part is really important because unlike unlike in the NBA or, or in, in, in some places in the West, we don't have readily available basketball data in the Philippines. So you can't just get it from an API. You can't just download it from somewhere. Uh, at that time, there was really nothing to, 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 to work with. So you can't do spatial analysis if, if you don't have spatial data, uh, which led me actually to my first uh, International Post 4G way back in 2015 in, in Seoul, where I presented that uh, that study and that application that we created. Um, and in 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 what in in some way, it also introduced me uh, to the larger uh, open source Post 4G and QGIS community, as well as uh, made me more appreciative and maybe even passionate, you know, about the community and about about open source and about Phos4G, which was why even after that, I continued trying to combine and also improve how I did my spatial analysis and how I ap applied that in basketball. So things like um, putting the data in a spatial database like PostGIS, uh, connecting it to, to Grass and Q, create exploring different kinds of visualizations in, in GIS, uh, creating a simple dashboard, and uh, that led me to right now my graduate thesis in my uh, master's in geomatics engineering um, program at the University of the Philippines, where I'm studying how to apply spatial analysis of spatial analysis in Philippine basketball um, with case studies for the Uni University Athletics Association of the Philippines or one of the collegiate uh, leagues in the country and for one specific season. So basketball or the, the combination of, of spatial analysis or using QGIS in basketball was somehow, um, was somehow has become really a part of this. And it was, it somehow became inevitable. I, I loved or I was very passionate about QGIS and I was very passionate about spatial analysis. I was also very passionate about sports and basketball analytics. So that marriage was uh, somehow, you know, really it came natural uh, in a sense. So if you want to, if you want to re to learn more about you know what I'm doing right now for my for my thesis, you can find it on on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, you can can feel free to follow me on social media. Um, BNHR.xyz, BNHRDOTXYZ, uh, Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube. And uh, again, with that out of the way, uh, why QGIS? There are a lot of, of applications that, that we can use. Um, in my study, I'm using Q, I'm using Python, I'm using R, uh, especially for the more analysis heavy um, analysis heavy or statistics heavy computations or spatial uh, spatial analysis and spatial statistics. But QJS is has almost everything it needs to become a analytics platform, specifically a sports analytics platform, because it has already powerful analysis and visualization algorithms, as we will see later on. It has a built-in data management system. It allows you to connect to different kinds of data sets, be it on, you know, on, be it on databases, flat files like CSVs, GeoJSONs, vector files, raster files. It handles almost everything that you you would need, uh, you know, for for you to perform spatial analysis and sports analysis. And another big thing is there's uh, great compatibility with Python and R which, as I mentioned, I am currently using both uh, Python and R for uh, the more computational heavy parts of my, you know, of my study. And having, you know, being able to use QGIS inside of Python, inside of R, or being able to use Python 
inside of Q is is really something that's uh that's an advantage when when you're using Q in in something like this. So before we actually start doing some work uh, on on seeing how you can use QGIS to analyze uh, basketball data. Let, let's talk a bit about the data that I'll be using or the data that I have. As I mentioned earlier, there's no readily available spatial data for basketball in the Philippines. This might be the case as well for, for some of the um, other places um, where some of the our watchers are, are, are viewing from. Um, thankfully, I was able to find uh, shot charts available online. Um, the, 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 the league and the season that I'm looking at right now, uh, UAAP season 81, they were partnered with FIBA during, during that season, I think. And the, their games were published online under the FIBA Live Stats platform. Um, FIBA Live Stats has uh, data for, I mean, publishes data not just for the games, but they also have uh, shot charts available. And these shot charts are loaded as HTML. So what I did was I built a little scraper uh, to be able to scrape the, the data set in, so that I would be able to, to use it in, in my study. And in this case, to be able to present to you guys how I'm using it in Q. Um, so if you, if you want to check the data set out, I have it on my GitHub. Uh, if you want to see the scraper as well, I have it on my GitHub too. You can use both of those. You can edit the scraper if, you, if you're looking for data or for a certain basketball league that's also uploaded inside of FIBA, the FIBA Live Stats platform. Maybe you can you know, use the scraper to scrape the data from there as well. Um, most of the information that I got from, from, from the shot, shot charts included the location, the points, or how many points a shot was worth whether it was made or not, the information about the player, the opposing team, the item venue, and then the shot type. Um, a bit of a caveat with the, with the data, its distance units are currently in decimeters, or uh, one unit of distance in, in the data set is around one-tenth of a meter. Uh, this was because that was also the units in pixels in, in the original data set that I scraped. But of course, this can be easily changed just by um, moving the decimal point uh, to the left or to the right. I mentioned this because you'll notice later on that I am using a current reference system that's whose units are in meters, uh, but the 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 units of my of of my coordinates for 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 the field goal locations are actually in decimeters. So whenever I do computations, I have to consider that and divide by divide by ten just to have the accurate distance measurements, for example. So that's that's it for the introduction. Um, we'll we'll work a bit on 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 basketball. We'll try to look at how to use QGIS for different kinds of things, uh, how to create basic shot charts, how to perform uh, shooting zones how to get a uh, distance of three pointers, um, then how to um, do shooting clusters and, and borrow noise as well. So we'll try to, as much as possible, create something uh, something like this during our during this this day or this session. So let's go do that. Brilliant, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the first, uh, thing that I, I'll show probably is the data. So again, as I mentioned, the um, I scraped this data online. I also transformed it so that uh, all the all the shots are actually um, all the shots are located um, on the half court, which makes it easier for analysis. I if you open the attribute table, you'll see that it has the uh, information information I mentioned the team the opponent whether it was made or not the X Y location or uh, the player's number the player uh, himself number of points the type of shot uh, the date and whether the shot was uh, um, made or not and the number of points that was scored based on that shot I also have a very simple court uh, court 
um, image or in this case a vector file. This one I created from NPL as, as a raster and then just converted it as a, to a vector for, for easier styling. Similar with this uh, shooting zone data set, which divides actually the court into a multiple uh, shooting zones where you can, that you can use for like zonal statistics or zonal analysis of shooting. So now we have the data, let's try to work on the data and create you know, some, some, some visualizations and analysis, starting from the most basic one, which is just shot charts. So when we, when we talk about shot charts, um, they're basically just um, point maps of, of, of shots. So we can, we can just consider them as, uh, as a map of, of a set of points. So the most basic form of, of a shot chart is just you know, made versus missed. So that's that's the simplest one that we can do. Um, one of the things that, as I mentioned, powerful with Q is that it has uh, it has built-in data management. So you can create filters, you can create selections. So in this case, if I I can create a shot chart using the entire data set, for example, so I can have um, a categorized symbology on um, made. Can classify that. I can make it, I can make the, I can classify it, I can change the, I can change the, the visualization, I can, most of the time people People symbolize the missed shots as a cross. I can also do that. So I can just replace the marker as a cross and then rotate it by uh, 90 degrees. And then as I mentioned, um, so we So again, uh, as as I mentioned, this could be this would be your your basic uh, shot chart, and then uh, earlier I said the beauty of QGIS is you already have built-in data management uh, available to you. So if I just want to get the shot chart for say a team, I could open a filter. I can filter it based on uh, the team. Let's select my alma mater. And now you have you know just the shot shot shot, shot chart for that for that team. Then you can do that uh, as well for for any combination of of features or or um, fields. So you can even just say you can create a filter for uh, team equals UP and uh, opponent, or you can even go shot type equals uh, jump shot. So then these are just the the, the field goals and the shot sh sh uh, shot chart for all those um, jump shots. So uh, that's one thing that's really great with working when working with Q. Um, can can utilize uh, all of the already existing algorithms that it has now uh, which makes you know which makes it really easy and also makes it really you know fast for you to work and create you know things like this um, so that's for shot charts the another one that we can look at would be the you know, shooting zones so um, if shot charts are were are if shot charts are 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 just point you know point point maps. Uh, a shooting zone is basically a uh, a zonal map. 
um, you compute for the statistics of of a that you can compute based on a court division or how, how you divide the court. So in this case, what we can do is we can compute for the we can compute for the field goal percentage as well as the points per attempt of say uh, a team in these uh, different zones uh, zone divisions. So again, we can uh, filter. We can create a filter. We can have our team equals uh, UP. And then you will use join attribute by location summit. And that would allow us to have our well summarize our uh, shooting so our data based on the shooting zones so uh, shooting zones as our uh, input layer join layer would be our uh, field goals uh, we'll get those that intersect with each other uh, we'll just get the made and the made points and then we'll get the count and the sum so what we're doing here is we're uh, computing for the number of, uh, first of all, the number of total shots taken, second, the number of made shots taken, and then lastly, the number of points scored uh, in that area. So what we can do is uh, we can run this, and it should output us this uh, joint layer. And if we... We can rename this as um, shooting zones. So if we open its attribute table, we can see that we have uh, the count of, this is made count, but in reality, this is just a count of all the field goals uh, taken. Made sum is the count of all the uh, field goals made. And made points sum is just the sum of all the points scored in that uh, specific zone or, or area. Then we can do our uh, visualization and analysis based on, on the data that we have. There are two ways we can do this. One, if we want to, to have the data, if we just want to have the data together with, um, together with our attribute table, we can use, you know, we can, Use the field calculator and then just create a field. So, for example, we want to add a field goal percentage, which is just um, the percentage of shots that are made inside of a zone. So, to get field goal percentage, we just need 100 times uh, made count, I uh, made sum over uh, made count. And uh, if we click OK, that should add this uh, field goal percentage uh, field or attribute in our data. And we can use that for uh, a graduated symbology. So field goal percentage, let's of course we can uh, we can totally change these values. So we say 0 to 25, 25 to 33, 33 to 40, 40 to 50, and then 50 to 100. So now we have, um, in this case, We have our field goal percentage on different on uh, different zones of the court. So that's one way to do it. We can compute it directly. Another way is we can actually just um, 
if we're not going if we were not going to need the the attribute to be a to be a field we can actually just put the put the computation directly here on the value field so so let me rename this as field goal percentage and this one let's say we want to compute for the ppa or the points per attempt which is basically just the number of points scored over the, the number of attempts taken so instead of adding a new field um, i could actually just use uh, an expression and then put the computation right here so it, that's made point sum over made points count and that would compute the uh, points per attempt at the each zone that I have if I click OK I can classify it and now I have my points per attempt map without really needing to compute another field or have another field um, ready so in this case I can uh, once again I'll change this 0.5 to 0.66, 0.66 to 0 0.80, 0 0.80 to 1, and 1 to 3. There. So if you'll notice the the area inside of the three point arc because of what i did uh it's va its colors or its symbology is the same in terms of field goal percentage in ppa but the areas outside of the three point arc the different the there's a difference in terms of um, um the colors or the symbology when it comes to field goal percentage in PPA. This shows us, uh, this is exactly the, one of the reasons why it, it's important to incorporate location, distance in, in our analysis of something like shooting and basketball. Because even if you shoot uh, the same percentage on, on outside of the three-point arc, you're actually scoring usually more, more points than if you were shooting the same way uh, for, for two-pointers. So that's for shooting zones. Um, another one we can do or we can look at is creating uh, three-point uh, distances like this. Um, in my case, in this case, what, what we'll do is we'll, uh, again, first we'll filter this. We just want to get all the made three-pointers. So we filter with made points equals three, that means we're getting all the data where the made shot, where the shot uh, was scored, and the score was uh, three points. So now we have this um, this subset of the features that are actually three pointers. Um, there are several ways to symbolize this. Of course, one way would just be to um, use uh, point markers. The other one, or if we want to create something like uh, similar to this is to utilize uh, geometry generators. So geometry, geometry generators are, are awesome. I, I think later um, it's one of, the, one of the most useful uh, features of Q together with the expression engine. So what we can do is we can actually make this a geometry generator uh, in the form of a line and then just uh, make a line from uh, the zero zero point, which I know is the center of the basket in my current geometry. So it you can't see it right now because it's black, but it it transformed itself into lines right, right there. So. Now we have this, another thing we can do is just, um, oops, uh, make it uh, graduated in a way that we can, we want to symbolize it based on distance. So again, you can compute the distances on the 
field calculator uh, using an expression, but you can also just have it here directly. So that could be distance. Um, your first geometry would be um, jump from WKT. Uh, it should be point, I'm not mistake, point. Zero zero. Oops. And uh, the current uh, geometry. Oops. There. Mm. there. Oh, and divided by ten. Yes, yeah, I remember. Um, uh, decimeters. Uh, the unit of my data is in decimeters, so I have to divide by 10 so that the value is in meters. So I can actually just use this um, this expression to compute the distance automatically and use that for my uh, graduated symbology. So I can click OK, um, classify uh, again, use very this for this one, and we can just actually change uh, the values here to make it more um, say 8.2 yeah and now you have um, distances uh, the the lines symbolized based on distance if you're feeling uh, adventurous, then you can add uh, draw effects and have it glow, for example. So that's something that you can you can also do. Yeah. So that's uh, that's it for 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 three pointers or you know um, highlighting as well the the power of geometry generators in in Q. Another one that uh, I usually do and that we can we can utilize is using QGIS to determine clusters as well as um, Voronoi polygons. So in this case, I have I have two field goal data sets that I've uh, pre-filtered, one for the University of the Philippines, UP, and another one for uh, the Ateneo de Manila EDM, uh, EDMU University. Uh, in this case, I want to compare um, their shots based on the clusters that they make and maybe the you know the Voronoi polygons of the centroids of the clusters and, and things like that. So we will um, utilize already existing uh, already existing algorithms in Q. We don't have to go outside of QGIS to do this. In this case, we can uh, use the k-means clustering. For example, for clusters, let's say we have eight clusters. And then if we run it, and we can style this. Categorized cluster ID classifier. So these are the clusters for, so I can rename this clusters P. And I can do actually do the same for 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 the other school. Um, don't forget to save your memory layers. So I can do the same for for EDMU. Let's make eight clusters. Fun. And then we can just copy the style and paste that one here. Yeah. So I rename this. And you can actually see that they have fairly different uh, clusters. But that's that would be more um, apparent if we do uh, other things. For example, we can um, 
we can find the um, the minimum the minimum bounding geometries for 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 our for our clusters. So in this case, we want to see, you know, we just want to polygonize, you know, basically the clusters. So for example, for for the clusters of, of UP, um, cluster ID, convex hull. And then I can run the same with, let me rename this first. I can run the same for EDMU, cluster ID, convex hull. So I'll have uh, bounding geometries for, for those two teams. And here you can, uh, it's more apparent the difference or the, uh, the, the difference in the clusters that their shots um, actually create. So in a sense, um, again, we can categorize this. Or we can even um, so if we actually look at the the shape that the their clusters create, it's uh, they're fairly different. And you can see that there are nuances in in how you know different teams take take shots. Aside from minimum bounding uh, polygons, we can also look at Voronoi's. So in this case, if we say we have these clusters, we can um, get the mean coordinates for each cluster by using the mean uh, coordinate algorithm. I'll say you look at the clusters for UP. Our unique ID field would be our cluster ID, and that would give us it. That should give us eight points, um, eight mean coordinates for one each for the clusters that we have. So that would be um, these things. So those are the mean coordinates for each of the cluster, and we can check if that's true by running a you know, Voronoi polygon testing algorithm. Let's add some 50% uh, extent just to make sure that we cover everything. Maybe 30% would be enough. Um, then we click run. And um, here we have our Voronoi for, um, and if we make this, uh, transparent, and then we put in the clusters again, you'll see that the Voronoi polygons actually included um, just the clusters. So those centroids, and then these are the Voronoi polygons for, 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 for UP in this case. Um, and then we can, we can again recreate that um, that uh, processing those processing steps for other data sets like um, just for another team a specific player uh, if we have data on time or or when the shot was taken we can even um, make a more specific analysis saying just just getting all the shots or the field goals from the last five minutes of the game the last two minutes of the game and see how well you know teams and players perform based on context so that's for um, clustering and uh, Voronoi polygons. Uh, one thing, once it, once your your the processing steps become you know um, too long or or too 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 many, what I usually do is create a a model. So since you, we already know the processing steps, for example, we have our input basically in this shooting clusters was just the um, the field goal locations for for a specific team player or whatnot. What we can do is create a model that gets that input, 
computes the clusters, um, gets the uh, mean coordinates, and then outputs a uses the Voronoi polygon algorithm at the end to to, cre to create that Voronoi polygon um, output. Same can be said with uh, getting the clusters and then getting the minimum bounding geometries for those clusters. So um, usually what I do if I have to recreate it uh, multiple times or if I have to batch process it for the multiple uh, con contextual data sets, multiple teams, multiple players, I would um, in, that, in that case just create a model and then just have that model run, for example. So the last um, the last one that we can look at is grid-based um, analysis, which is fairly common and at the same time also fairly popular when, when you talk about um, analyzing basketball um, and you know using spatial analysis on basketball. Um, in a way, Dividing the court into tessellations makes it uh, easier for us to perform our analysis. Um, instead of uh, shooting zones like this one, we create a more general division of the court. Uh, it also makes it um, more uh, discretized so we can actually see the, um, the spatial patterns on the data that we have. Instead of just, if you look at shooting zones, that's not really uh, you can't really see the spatial patterns here. Uh, shot charts would help you um, in terms of your spatial patterns, but they're not as um, uh, as as good as when you actually tessellate or create a grid for for the court. So there are several ways to create grids in Q. Um, we have a built-in uh, create grid algorithm. So with that, we can create, say, for example, a square grid. So create a square grid. The spacing would be, again, uh, it's technically 5 meters here, but in the data set, it's 0 0.5 meters because you have to divide by, by 10. So that's around 50 centimeters or half a meter. Um, and then run the grid. It should be, oops, wrong, wrong type of grid. Rectangle uh, grid. Run it, and you should have a there. So we have here a square grid. And we can use this square grid to actually, you know, compute for different statistics uh, for each cell in the in the grid that we have. So in 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 our case, we can once again do a join you know, join attributes by location summary. You can also, if you just want to count, for example, the number of points, you can count points in polygon. Uh, we have a lot of options in, in, in Q to be able to do you know, a lot of the types of analysis that, that we want. In this case, I'll just be um, showing how to compute for something like uh, a field goal percentage and PPA, and then map that out as, as a grid instead of the shooting zones that we did earlier. The steps would be the same. Uh, we just need to have our square grid. We need to have our point layer and then we select the made made points we also select account and sum so once again we are adding information uh, for each grid as to the number of shots taken the number of shots that were made and the number of points that were scored in that um, square grid so if we click run, it should give us this uh, joint layer. Um, we can call this, again, let's say just PPA, the points per attempt. Uh, 
called this PPA grid. So I can create a grid weighted symbology for the PPA grid. Um, once again, I don't need to create a separate field on my layer. I could just use my uh, an expression for this. So that would be um, made, oh, made point sum over made points count. Uh, and that would be um, my PPA. So uh, as you would notice, if you actually look at the data, there would be a lot of nulls because there are um, there are uh, cells wherein the value is zero. We mean no shots were taken, no shots were made. So those would result in null. If we don't want to have nulls and just have you know, null values be zero, then we could use a uh, coalesce function or expression. So that would make our null values uh, zero. So we can click OK, uh, equal interval, classify, and you would have that. In fact, we can just keep this as zero, zero, remove it entirely, just have something like this. And let's make it a bit more. So these are the points per attempt by UP um, for, for that grid. And then we can, again, we can repeat the same steps for, for the other team, and then we can compare that, uh, compare those afterwards. Um, we can make a simple computation like PPA, or we can create uh, something that's uh, complicated depending on the expression that we'll be using or the statistic that we will be mapping. In in this uh, last example, I'll be showing a uh, hex grid and a computing also for for PPA. But in this case, instead of just showing um, the PPA, I will be styling it in a way that it will show both the number of shots taken based on the size of the hexagon and the number of, and the PPA based on the, um, based on the color of, of the hexagon. So again, go to grid and create a, a hexagon grid. Uh, this would be an extent of five, five, run. And we have here our hex grid. Now that I have my, my hex grid, I can once again uh, do my join attributes by uh, location summary. So this is a bit overused, but it, it's really just what you need. You just need to be able to summarize your data based on your cells. Um, so again, let's look at our our values for uh, the rest of the Philippines, intersects. We all know it's made and made points. And for here, we have count and sum. Okay. Then we click run. We have our joint layer. Uh, we can make, say, PPA hex grid. For this one, um, there are several ways to do what I mentioned. One way is to compute for the centroids of this. So you can actually you can you can for example uh, centroids create a centroid based on the PPA grids uh, and then have um, a graduated symbology based on color and then have the size uh, be data defined. Um, Another way would just be to use a, instead of, um, 
single sim you could actually use a geometry generator and just have your basically have your centroid right here so that would be centroid geometry so as you can see i now have points instead of polygons i could then replace my marker as a hexagon and then rotate it by i think 90 uh, 90 degrees a size would be in should be in meters at scale i could use the assistant to help me with this um made points count which is just the count of the number of shots from 0 to 20 and then i could have uh just this from uh, zero size of one to five so now the size of my hexagons actually pertain to the number of or the amount of shots taken and i just need now to make sure that the the ppa which is um once again just made points over made point sum is here of course i can replace this with something like uh, spectral there so i can again i can replace the i can replace the the legend i can replace the symbology but that's that's the that's a very easy way to create um, or to show two variables basically um, size showing the number of shots taken and then color showing the um, showing the the value in this case points per attempt. So now in one in one no just in just one look you'll be able to see the areas where you know they make a lot of shots but also take them or at the same time where they no, don't take as many shots, but uh, maybe score less and things like that. There, there. So uh, that's it for 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 the for 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 the presentation. Uh, if you have, uh, if you want to follow along, or if you want to recreate this uh, once again, the data set is on is on my GitHub account, um, and of course you can rewatch the video just to see uh, how it was done. If uh, there are questions. I'm very much open to answering them now. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much, Ben. That's absolutely <laughs> awesome. Um, so, oh, let me pop my video on so you can see me. <laughs> so there are a couple of questions. Um, I just do want to assure those people who are looking for the data um, and for those links that mm -hmm. um, there will be a recording of this video. There always is. And um, Ben will send those to me and we will put those into the description of the video so you will have full access to um, those things um, that Ben mentioned in the video and showed links of in the video. Yeah. Um, so there are a couple of really great questions. Um, the first one is basically um, RP asks that um, why use QGIS for this? Um, it seems there's a lot of sports analysis and can it be done with regular data vis and data analysis packages? Um, so what are the advantages of using QGIS? Yeah, um, there, first of all, it's free and open source. So I don't have to, I have, I don't have to, to, to pay for, 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 for anything. Um, second of all, um, it can be done with, with existing, uh, with existing applications. In fact, as I, as I mentioned, I'm in my study, I'm using Python, I'm using R, and I'm also using Q. Uh, the, the main advantage really of Q is uh, the, 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 it, it's a lot more powerful in terms of visualization than just plain Python and R. So as, as you can see, when I, I did the last, uh, the last example um, using 
uh, the expressions and geometry generators gives me a lot of freedom to gives me a lot of freedom to to visualize uh, the data and that could be something that's not as you know as easy to do with just plain you know uh python and r whether you use uh matplotlib ggplot or or things like that plus actually uh, i forgot to mention it's so much easier to create an actual map on, on queue so i did not show it in in the example but if you you have your print layout so if you can if you want to create it make it into an actual you know map or something worth of a, worth uh as a presentation as a shareable image and not just uh not just a chart in in made in in ggplot or in in matplotlib then q would help you a lot with that uh you can create your you know basically uh, uh maps already that that's that's shareable and not uh not just um, no, not just the things that look like charts that were made in in mm. in, in Python or R. So that that for me is is a big plus. It it makes it easier for for me to create you know uh, easily or readily publishable stuff uh, for um, for the web or for 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 printing. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Ben. That's great. Um, the last couple of questions are just generally for access to the data. Yeah. Um, uh, someone couldn't find the court shape file. Um, yeah. So, you know, those sort of questions, if you are on the um, QGIS Open Day Telegram channel and you want some clarification from Ben, I'm sure he's happy to answer your questions. Just fire them off in the channel and he will guide you as to where those things are. And as I did say, I will put the links for this in the description of this video. I'm just checking through to see if there are any other um, questions. Yeah, I can jump in with a quick question while you're reading oh, this. Please, yeah, there. absolutely. Um, ben, have you um, discovered any like insights from your study that helped to win games, or you know, did you go to the team and say, "Oh, you should shoot from the left rather than the right because there's a hole there" or something like that? Yeah, it's 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 actually what's uh, it's actually the the goal of the study, and it's uh, what what I should be doing next, uh, consulting as well um, the, the teams that, the, that I'm, I'm studying right now. Unfortunately, because of, because of COVID, it's been, I think, two years since the last face-to-face uh, bas -face basketball season. So it's really not as probably as urgent right now uh, as it is. But yeah, that's, that's, uh, it's, um, that is something that I would, I would really like to look into. And I've been uh, meaning to communicate uh, my results with with the team as well. I uh, for 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 my for my school, I did some 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 stuff. I think a few years ago, helping them do some analysis. But yeah, um, it would be nice and it would be neat if uh, not just more people do it, but if this actually leads to you know to maybe changes in 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 their in 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 how they approach the game and things like that. Because yeah, it. I mean, in, in I think in in the West, in the NBA, and in in, in Europe, this is already something big, uh, using spatial analytics. But um, not sure how how big it is currently right now in the Philippines. And but I'm hoping that uh, things like this would inspire more people to actually, you know, uh, do these things. Do they do they know that you're doing this work? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they um the I've. Yeah, I've worked with uh, one team, which is my my alma mater before, uh, and then I'm also on the process of, of, of of communicating with with other teams in the leagues and uh, and just sharing the results and sharing um, sharing the the insights that 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 I've got from the study. Hopefully, I finish it soon, and it would would be something that I can share more with with the general populace. I'm going to sneak in one more question before Amy grabs the mic back. Did did uh, how, how did they actually capture the data? Do they like have trackers on uh, on the players on the ball, or do they have like just some uh, image recognition software, or is it manual? Or yeah, um, um, for for this one, I actually am not sure because uh, the the um, the people who captured it was was. Um, uh, were in, and imported it were and imported it directly in FIBA Live Stats, and I, I had no, I think I, I had no like a direct relationship or communication with them. Uh, as far as I know, if 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 this is NBA data that we're working on, for example, 
Um, then they would they have Sports VU, which is a player tracking system utilizing like uh, photogrammetry concepts, six cameras and stuff like that. Uh, but I think for for this case, it would probably just be at, it would probably be manual um, in terms of just trying to pinpoint the where the where the court locations are or or where shots are taken in the court. In my undergrad research, I created a, a simple extraction al extraction uh, application that would allow you to extract directly from videos. Um, but that takes quite a bit of time, so I'm not sure if. Hopefully, they're doing something like that as well. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, yeah, I'm not as to the accuracy of the of the locations. I, um, I'm just, uh, in a sense, I'm putting my trust in in the in the data source if um, that they they were able to extract this accurately as well. Um, Alrighty, cool. I'm gonna have to cut us there um, because we're over time a little bit, and um, our next session will be starting right now. So I just wanted to say thank you to Ben. That was such a fantastically interesting presentation, and please join us for the next session. Yep. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Ben. Thank you.